it's here, it's happening. This could be the ultimate Bitcoin bear trap, the final shakeout that gets everybody offside and sideline before the final rally in the market, the final leg of the bull cycle where we see massive price markups in a very short amount of time. Take a look at this bear trap chart right here. I don't want you to think as you look at this and to ask yourself, where do you really think we are in this cycle? Are we really on the other side of it now where everything's going down? Does that what the charts look like right now? Or do we more look like we've had a grind up? We've had the big capitulation event, the bear trap when bears get cocky and think everything's going to go to zero, right? Now that bear trap, that happens when the price of an asset appears to be on a steady decline. Bears get cocky. They think it's going to keep going down forever. But what we're actually in is a mid-cycle sell-off, right? The trap is set. So instead of the price continuing to go down and Bitcoin going to, I've seen some of the Florida bring up $20,000, right? Instead of going down that low, the price reverses, goes back up, starts setting new highs. That could be the situation that we're in right now. And I want to try to back that up with some charts and some data, not just pulling things out of my butt here, okay? A lot of people are going to say, of course, guys, look at the S&P 500. Look what's going on. This is not a bear trap. This is the beginning of the end, okay? The bears are right. The fear is here. Don't you see what happened to Japan recently? What about the recession? The recession's coming. I know the banks are not saying the recession's coming. I know the economic indicators are very much mixed right now, but the bears are going to say, but the jobs numbers, man, the unemployment numbers, it's so bad. It's only going to get worse. Maybe they're right. They could be right, right? We have to watch jobs now. It's the big thing we have to watch. Inflation is largely under control until probably the rate cuts come and things start turning back up. But that's for later us to worry about, okay? You're also going to hear lots of other scary things. The yield curve is uninverting, and that's something to pay attention to, but it hasn't uninverted yet. And usually from the time that it uninverts to a recession, it can be up to six months. So again, there's time for that final leg in the market. This is a macro-driven cycle. I know all cycles to an extent are driven by macro and risk on risk off attitudes of investors. And that certainly affects what they're thinking when it comes to Bitcoin and their willingness to allocate towards a risky asset like Bitcoin. Of course, the real, ass, the real risk all this time has been not owning Bitcoin, right? But investors are taking a risk on attitude right now. As you can see from this chart here, investors are once again looking at markets and moving back into a risk on territory. They want to take risks. They want to get returns. The S&P 500 as well, very important. The price of the S&P 500 is above all key moving averages currently, and they're all trending up. That's the 50-day EMA, the 100-day EMA, the 200-day EMA. They're all heading up, 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 up. So we're not yet after that, of course, big sell-off, which was a very um, scary market moment, obviously. But that had an almost immediate recovery as the Bank of Japan backed down. Recession fears have gone away a little bit. Still there, still lingering. People are still uneasy and for good reason. But right now, S&P 500 is looking good. And we have to look at the S&P 500 because that's, again, going to determine the risk on risk off attitudes. If the equity markets start crashing, it's not going to be any good news for our crypto coins. OK, and here's the monthly of the S&P 500. This is the monthly chart with the MACD on it. As you can see, we're still trending up. We're not trending down on the blue line on the MACD yet. Potentially lots of fuel left in the tank here. Obviously, be careful of a reversal to signal the end of the bull cycle, right? So when you see the S&P 500 topping out on the MACD on the monthly, warning signal. We're not there yet. So again, building more of a case for a bear trap. Now, before we get into some more Bitcoin specific indicators here, I want to take a quick moment to let you know about the Wealth Master newsletter, best damn newsletter in the business. If you ask me, of course, it is my newsletter, so I'm slightly biased, but our readers love it. And I'm sure you will too. And here's the reason why because every single week, my team and I are working hard to bring you the latest and the greatest on altcoins, meme coins, all kinds of stuff happening in the market. We work hard to save your time and also to help keep you ahead of the curve. So you can find out why 140,000 readers a week love it by clicking on that link down below. It's free. Check it out. 
Thank you very much. So a lot of people are out there saying, look, Bitcoin's just lagging behind right now. All the big supply overhang issues are largely dealt with. Mt. Gox Bitcoin is out. Silk Road Bitcoin's largely been accounted for. German Bitcoin, boom. No big worry scenarios out there anymore, or at least none of the really big known ones. Bitcoin's just lagging behind. It'll catch up to equity markets. And what could actually be showing the way here is gold. Check out this chart here from Charles Edwards showing that Bitcoin tends to lag a few months behind gold price action. It is digital gold after all. So if that's the case with gold recently hitting new all-time highs, perhaps... Bitcoin not so far behind. And of course, we're also seeing continued accumulation for Bitcoin. There hasn't been, aside from the big over, overhang supply issues and stuff like that and some whale repositioning. Overall, we're seeing strong accumulation scores continuing as this chart here shows. We are also seeing institutions continuing to show up. We're seeing big inflows still for Bitcoin ETFs, Wall Street, hedge funds, all these big players, they're still into Bitcoin. They are buying Bitcoin ETFs in the current market conditions. And they're buying huge amounts, hundreds of millions of dollars a day on average. Crazy, crazy numbers here, okay? That has not gone away. Sailor's still going to buy $2 billion of the Bitcoin. FTX money is coming back soon. So FTX creditors are going to get $12.7 billion or something like that. And these are all crypto natives who have been sidelined, some of them for the entirety of the bull run. They're going to, you know, revenge buy to get back into the market potentially. So a lot of that stuff going on. We also see the dollar showing a bit of weakness recently. So the DXY or the dollar index currently looking like it is breaking down. Now it's lost the 200 week exponential moving average. Previously, when we've seen this happen, what do you see shortly thereafter? You tend to see a rally in risk assets. Right now it is sitting at critical support on the weekly. So it's worth keeping that in mind. Maybe we see a dead cat bounce to confirm the breakdown with a touch back up of that 200 week EMA, the kiss of death, if you will, before seeing it lose more market positioning. Okay. We are also seeing M2 money supply going up. Historically, when we see big breakouts in the M2 money supply, the price of risk assets follows higher. Okay. So a lot of money flooding into the system. China the other day announced a huge stimulus program. The Fed, the rate cuts are coming. The monetary easing is coming. The treasury is buying back $50 billion in bonds right now. Big things are happening out there. Okay. Plus on a very more Bitcoin specific angle, the Bitcoin hash ribbon buy signal happened a few weeks ago. I know it's been crazy price action since then, but it's still in effect. Okay. Plus we're in a post Bitcoin having world. Bitcoin having happened in April. Usually price really starts moving six months after the Bitcoin having, which puts us in, you know, September, October sometime. Never have we seen a Bitcoin cycle finish this early or this weekly, right? Well, you tell me the best we could do is 74K. After all those years, not buying it. Wall Street's not buying it either. I mean, Wall Street is buying Bitcoin, but they're not buying the bullshit. Again, a recession could derail all this, but it's not looking like that's the most likely scenario right now. Maybe it'll surprise us all. Always be ready for the unexpected in markets because that's what markets like to do. We still have no pie cycle top either. How far away it could be before a pie cycle top is anyone's guess. And of course, depends on how violent the Bitcoin price action to the upside is, but it has not topped yet. And the cycle likely isn't finished until that happens. When that does happen, run for the damn hills, guys. Final thoughts. Final leg of the market cycle could be starting soon, getting us up to that 150 or 200K price point. It's probably going to happen quicker than people expect, not necessarily sooner, but quicker than people expect. When it does, you have to understand that's probably the time to run away from markets. If you see Bitcoin at 150K, start thinking about selling. OK, not necessarily your Bitcoin. You can if you want to, if you want to rebuy. But I'm talking about your altcoins, right? Get the time to get the heck out of altcoins. No, financial advice, obviously, guys. You got to make your own decisions. We're just presenting the data here for you. You got to make your own calls. And maybe none of this is right. Dollar bounces back. Stock markets go down. None of these Bitcoin indicators mean shit because Bitcoin's just too new of an asset. We don't have enough data sets. Besides, even if they do mean shit, you can't predict the future with previous things just because it worked out in the past doesn't mean it's going to work out in the future. We're just going to go to Goblin Down. It's all going to zero, zero, zero. Let me know your opinion down below in the comment section. Is everything I presented here 
typical of what we should expect from a bear trap? Is this just a big bear trap and we are still going to go to 150, maybe 200K in the next six to eight months, for example? Or is that it? It's over recessions here. No one is bearish enough. Goblin Town soon. Thanks for watching.